Hi everybody, if you don't know me already, my name is Kaylee. I'm a gut health nutrition coach and I help people to overcome their chronic gut and digestive issues using the principle of the principles of ancestral nutrition as well as some other holistic health principles. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you an ancestral and gut healing week of eating. So this is gonna be slightly over a week. I bought for about nine days for both my boyfriend and I. Um, it's all very ancestral food and it's all great for gut healing as well. So I'm going to be diving into how I go about uh, meal planning and grocery shopping, exactly what I bought, and then why I picked the various things that I did. So if that's something you're interested in and you want some practical tips on how to grocery shop for an ancestral diet and for a gut healing diet, then be sure to stick around. And I also wanna let you guys know I have a couple of spots open in my program, um, Ancestral Gut Healing, right now. So if you are interested in healing your gut in an ancestral and holistic way, then be sure to stick around till the end and I will talk more about that. So first, I just wanna show you a little like overview of the groceries. So this is everything that I just bought at the grocery store this morning. So you can see I organized it. There's some dairy and juices and meats over here eggs, cheese, or some fruit, veggies, potatoes, things like that. So yeah, I will be going over all of this, exactly what I have here, what I have planned for it, and what I thought about when picking out each one of these foods. Okay, so I wanna start by going over how I meal plan. So throughout the week, whenever I think of ideas of meals I could make soon, I write them down on a list that I keep in my journal. Um, yeah, so that I have ideas when it comes time to meal plan. So then for me on Tuesday afternoons, I look over that list, I see what I have extra of in the fridge, and then I plan out what my boyfriend and I will be eating for the next week. So we don't always eat the same things. Um, his diet is a lot based around meat and potatoes and milk and eggs um, and it's very simple that's the way he likes to eat I like to get a little bit fancier sometimes so we share some meals and we eat some things differently but anyway so I write out that list of what we're gonna eat so for this week what that looked like was for breakfast he has steak and potatoes and eggs and then I've got, oh, and then he has rice and eggs and chicken. And then I have every day bacon and I've got some eggs again. <laughs> and then I've got grapefruits and I've got some hollandaise sauce, which I will make with the eggs and with some butter as well. And then we both have coffee. So I got some coffee and we put some milk in our coffee. We actually have different milk in the fridge right now um, that we use for coffee. I buy the raw milk here for drinking, but we usually use a really good brand. It's Strauss, but it's not raw for our coffee um, just because raw milk is kind of expensive. So we drink the raw and we use that for the coffee. But so that's breakfast is. And then for lunches, he will have rice and ground beef patties that I will make after this. I put some spices in it and then some mozzarella with that. Uh, and then I will have, what am I having this week? I am gonna be having some little quesadillas made with corn tortillas, pepper jack cheese, and then I'm gonna be having some ground beef patties as well. And then I'm gonna have some melon and I will also have liver heart pate. He will have that too. That is in the fridge because I already make that. So I always have liver and heart and the ingredients to make pate or the pate on hand. So that is our organs. We both have a spoon of liver heart pate every day. Same thing with bone broth. Bone broth is a lunch thing. We'll have a cup of bone broth at lunch. I actually have my bone broth on the stove right now going, but I use chicken feet onions, carrots, um, garlic, kombu seaweed, parsley, apple cider vinegar in my bone broth. So we have that every day as well. So those are two key ancestral things that I don't have in front of me, but I do have in the fridge and we always have. Uh, I also have some sauerkraut that I made. So I might throw that in with my lunches on Sundays too. So then for dinner, let's see, 
We will be having chicken noodle soup. So I bought a whole chicken, which I like to use for that. Um, and it comes with the organs in it. So I can dice up those organs, throw it in the soup. And um, yeah, and I can save the bones to make bone broth later. So I will use some bone broth in the chicken noodle soup, the chicken. I did buy some noodles. So this is my one not gut friendly thing here that if you're healing your gut, I would not recommend eating. Um, I have already healed my gut, so I can throw some noodles in every once in a while and be all right. So yeah, and don't buy these if you're trying to heal your gut. I actually prefer a different brand, but they didn't have it. That is an ancient grain pasta. Um, yeah, so that is not something that I typically eat very much of, but every once in a while I do like to have a little bit. So I will have that. I have lots of carrots and lots of celery and some parsley and some onions for the soup. Uh, yeah, I already have the bone broth over there and I have garlic over there, salt, pepper, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the gist of the soup. We will also be having a ground beef stir fry. So that will enthrall some rice. I always soak this in apple cider vinegar, which I also have in the kitchen um, overnight too, to make it more digestible. So I have I have some rice soaking right now, but essentially I use a strainer and I rinse out the rice. Then I put it in a Tupperware, fill it with filtered water and a dash of apple cider vinegar. So that makes this much more tolerable. If you have really, really bad gut issues, you want to avoid rice probably for now, but it is something, it's one of the easiest grains to be able to digest. So that's what I do. I just prepare it properly and it's fine. Um, so yeah, so while that, we'll have some of this ground beef. I will not make into patties and I will save for the ground beef fried rice. I have a lot of veggies for that, so we'll be putting some bell pepper in there, some onions, um, some broccolini, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the gist of it. And then I will obviously be putting some eggs in there as well. And then we have some kimchi to go with it. So uh, yeah, kimchi is great for your gut because it's fermented, so that's really awesome. So that's one other thing we'll be having. And I like to have sparkling grapefruit juice throughout the day. So I bought this. Um, it's really nice. It's very hydrating. Uh, my boyfriend likes apple juice. So I got that for him. And uh, yeah, let's see what else I got here. Um, I'm having tongue tacos tonight. I had some leftover tongue. So that is on the stove right now. And I have extra stuff from last week that I'm using for tonight and tomorrow night. So I already have some salsa and sour cream for that. Um, I bought an avocado because I ran out to go on those and I bought more corn tortillas because I ran out to go on those. So yeah, I'll be having those, um, the ground beef fried rice and the chicken noodle soup. So that's it for me. For him, he will have the ground beef fried rice, the chicken noodle soup, and then he has two dinners. So he'll also be having uh, either potatoes or rice with ground beef patties for dinner. So those are the meals. And after I plan that out, I just look at what we already have and I make a list of what I need to buy. I try to be very precise because I like to get the exact amount we need and we'll use so we don't waste food or waste money. So I did that this morning. I went grocery shopping. I went to Sprouts and Trader Joe's. That's just kind of my go-to. I find a good quality price balance there. I like Sprouts better, but there's a few things at Trader Joe's that are just a really good deal that are still good quality. So yeah, that's kind of the meals we got going on. Um, for reference, this was about $380, um, which is a little higher than it normally is because I bought a little extra. I'm going camping when I would normally go grocery shopping next week. So yeah, I bought about two extra days in there. So that made it a little bit higher. Normally it's more like 350, so I guess that's not that different. But anyway, so in case you're curious. So I wanna go over kind of what I think about when I buy each one of these foods, or at least a lot of them. We'll see how long that takes. So first, milk. So I have some raw milk here. And basically with milk, raw is the best if you can get it and you can afford it. Um, it's just a lot easier to digest. Some people won't be able to tolerate dairy right away if they've got issues, but once you heal your gut, if you get really good quality dairy and you slowly introduce it, uh, most people can tolerate it 
Uh, the vast majority of my clients that start out with uh, dairy intolerances are able to reintroduce it with time, especially when they go for raw milk. So if you can't get raw, that's okay. I have another milk, like I mentioned in the fridge right now that is not raw, that I also use. Uh, so the things I look for are, is it organic ideally? Um, is it non-homogenized? So that means it has that fat cap at the top still, and you can just mix that right in. Um, you want no hormones, no antibiotics, um, grass-fed ideally. Let's see, is there anything else on this one? This one says soy free, so that's a nice added bonus as well. It's kind of hard to find that sometimes. So yeah, that's kind of the gist of what I'll look for. Um, the Strauss one comes in glass, which is amazing because the more plastic you can avoid, the better. But this one doesn't, but that's just the way it is. So that's kind of what I look for in milk. And that's really what I look for in dairy. Uh, let's see, I also have this butter, which is Strauss butter. I'm not gonna open it up right now, but these have been really yellow this year. So I've been very happy with this. Uh, yeah, I look for the, the same kind of things in butter. So I'm not gonna go over that again. And then also all your food, if you buy it, the same brands on a repetitive basis. How does it taste? You know, how is it? Uh, how does it smell? How does it taste? How does it look over and over again? Um, just to see how it is. So reliably, the raw milk tastes amazing. Reliably, this butter tastes great and is super bright yellow. So that's what I look for. Cheese. Um, let's see. I got some pepper jack. It is organic. Um, Honestly, I look for the same things. I don't always do perfect. So this one really just has organic on it. It doesn't really have anything else, but if you can get raw or grass fed, that's awesome. If not, you don't have to be 100% perfect. Uh, let's see, this mozzarella. Yeah, I don't really have anything special on this. It probably would have been better if it was organic, but this is what I bought. So, you know, happens sometimes. Um, okay, so that's kind of the dairy. For eggs, I get these, we eat a lot of eggs. We have four dozen here. We have another dozen in the fridge right now. I have these ones from Trader Joe's because they're a really good deal. They're usually pretty darn orange yoked and they taste really good. Um, they're pasture raised, which, you know, I don't know how much that means, but they're no antibiotics, no hormones. So they've got a lot of good stuff like that that I look for. These ones are not organic. Um, if you get organic, that's even better. But honestly, these are the ones I buy. I don't buy 100% organic. I buy probably like 80 or 90%. Um, I like to kind of open it up and like read a little thing. They have something about how they have wide open spaces for their chickens. So I like to read that uh, when I'm first looking at products just to see how good they are. Uh, ground beef, I got grass fed. Ground beef is so cheap, it's easy to get grass fed. So I have 100% grass fed here. Um, Yeah, oh, I thought this one was organic. I guess it's not. It's no antibiotics and no hormones though, so that's also stuff I look for. And it is 100% grass fed. Uh, yeah, I really thought that was organic, so I guess it's not. Anyway, um, so I also got these steaks. Um, these are not organic, that is ideal. But like I said, I don't buy everything like that because I do like to balance the quality and budget. But they are uh, no artificial ingredients added. Let's see what else to say. I guess it doesn't say a lot on here, but what I look for in meat is the no hormones, no antibiotics. Um, organic and grass fed are great. You don't have to get it 100% of the time though. Uh, chicken, same kind of thing. No antibiotics ever, no hormones, no steroids. Um, cage free rays, I really like that, so. These are a really good deal. I, oh, I also look for bone-in skin-on chicken because it has a lot more collagen and that's gonna be really helpful for healing up leaky gut um, and so many other things for your joints, your hair, your skin, your nails, all that. So I've got that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I like to get the whole chicken. This one's organic and all the same stuff, comes with organs, I love that. So, oh, and then I also have bacon. And the extra thing to look for with bacon is you want no nitrites, um, which this I believe is, you can look, yes, there's none in the ingredients um, list. And then usually it'll say it on here, 
but I don't want to spend a bunch of minutes looking at this label right now. So anyway, yeah, that's an extra thing to look for in bacon. Otherwise, you're going to look for kind of the same things as the other meats. Um, okay, so then veggies. I try to get organic, so same. Big carrots, celery, pretty straightforward organic. The onions are, um, I believe the parsley is too. Uh, bell pepper is. The broccolini is. Uh, the cantaloupe is as well. Let's see. Um, they're very limited on the grapefruits. I'm not sure on this. They are organic. Wonderful. So grapefruits. Avocado. Oh, this one wasn't because it was cheaper. And yeah, that's just what I bought this time. But the berries are definitely organic. Um, so yeah, with the veggies. Oh, and the potatoes are as well. I have a bunch of these. So with the veggies and fruit, I tend to go for organic almost all the time. Um, and I like to get in season stuff as well. So in season stuff is going to have more nutrients in it. Um, it's going to be fresher. It's going to taste better and it's going to be a little bit cheaper as well. So I do buy in season stuff. Um, sometimes I'll smell it in the store. Um, yeah. And if it's a very vulnerable thing, like the raspberries, I will always buy that organic or yeah, like the parsley or something like that, where if pesticides were sprayed, they'd be like right on it. I definitely buy organic. Um, it is worth it to buy mostly organic. It will help you heal quicker. Um, as you can see, you don't have to be a hundred percent perfect, but the more you can, the better. Um, okay. So let's see what else I have here. Uh, I, think I already mentioned the sparkling water. This is pretty straightforward. It's in a glass bottle, which is lovely. Um, sparkling mineral water, Italian. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so then if you can get any kind of mountain spring water, that's great. For our regular water, we have a filter at home. Um, yeah, so then baking soda. This I really don't use for eating, so I don't mind that it's not organic, but I use this instead of shampoo. I use it for the washing machine, for cleaning. Um, yeah, that's really what I use it for. And I needed some more. And then coffee, I always buy organic coffee because it is the most chemically sprayed crop in the world. So definitely buy organic coffee and you're like, I don't wanna brew a bunch of pesticides into my mug of coffee. So that's what I got here. I also like to get medium or dark roast. Um, this is medium dark because it'll get rid of more mycotoxins if those are in there. So that's basically coffee is more prone to molds when it's sitting around and they can produce mycotoxins, which are killed off more in dark roasts, but can still be present. Um, yeah, so if you get dark roast, you're gonna get less, <laughs> if hopefully none. Organic, you'll have less pesticides. And then this was a whole bean one that I ground there, so I do like that when it's a fresher grind. Um, I avoid blends because then you need like all the sources to be good instead of just one. So that's what I like. And then I like to read the back of it and see if it says anything about like small batches or something like that is a little bit better. You can also buy ones like Purity Coffee is a great one that are like really great about not getting any mycotoxins in, but they are about two or three times as expensive. So this is kind of my way of doing that. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I have some tortillas. This is another thing I always get organic because corn is very heavily genetically modified and sprayed with glyphosate, which gives you leaky gut. It triggers zonalin, um, to basically make your gut leaky, to increase the permeability of your gut lining. And that just makes food sensitivities worse. It makes everything so bad. So corn is definitely something you should get organic. Um, it's good to get for these, something that's made more traditionally, um, has very minimal ingredients. Anything with an ingredient label, always read it. Um, if it's something you buy repetitively, that's okay. Once you've checked it, it's good to check it again every once in a while because it could change. But yeah, so yeah, always read that. Um, get the organic ones. And if you have bad gut issues, this is something you want to limit. This is a good example here. So like, I like to limit nuts, seeds, legumes, and grains because those are the most harmful for your gut. So when you're healing, it's good to pick your favorites, try to properly prepare them and keep them very minimal. So for me, the rice, soaking it, and some corn tortillas, 
Uh, I actually like to get another one that's all sprouted and really good and prepared more properly, but they were out of it today, so I ended up with this one. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the middle ground foods there. And then obviously this is not, the noodles is not great if you're trying to heal your gut. If you are already healed, then a little bit of this is fine every once in a while. Again, I've been healed for like five years, so it's okay if I have noodles every once in a while, but if you're trying to heal, I would not go for those. Um, the last thing I have is I bought two of these bars of soap here. I really like these because it's really hard to find soap without vegetable oils and your skincare should be like the quality of your food. You want it to be free of vegetable oils and just really good quality. So anyway, this one is made with olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, castor oil, uh, goat milk, and essential oils. So I like this one. Um, palm oil gets a bad rap because they often cut down rainforests for it, which is not great. Um, oh, this one's not. A lot of times they'll make it with sustainable palm though, which is different. They don't cut the rainforest down for it. And it is a little higher in saturated fat, so it's more stable than vegetable oils. So anyway, I'm happy with those oils. Soap is so hard to find good of. I actually want to start making my own soap, but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, so yeah, if you can find like a tallow-based soap, goat milk is great, lard, animal fat is the best, uh, but it's so hard to find nowadays. So anyway, those are the bars of soap I went with um, just for the shower. And that was the only kind of toiletry thing we needed. So yeah, this is, this is all of the food we have. I guess one other thing that we have uh, pretty much every day that is not here because I already have it in the fridge is I do make these little chocolate mint treats that have dark chocolate that's 100% dark chocolate, uh, white chocolate, and then some butter and some peppermint extract in them. And those are really good. Um, the white chocolate has a few things that aren't ideal, but it's hard to find great white chocolate. They're a really good treat. And as you can see, we're pretty darn good about whole healthy foods and there's very minimal kind of treat things in here. Uh, we rarely ever eat out, so this is exactly what we'll eat this week. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. I hope that was helpful. Um, I know this is different than my typical videos, so if you like this style, if you like seeing kind of into the grocery shopping, the meals, what I eat, kind of what's in practice for gut healing, let me know. Um, yeah, so if you liked it, be sure to like the video, share it with anyone that you think might benefit from it, you know, comment, let me know what you want to see more of in the future. And yeah, I really appreciate that. And then also, if you are interested in working together, um, I do have some spots open in my program, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So basically in my program, Ancestral Gut Healing, I help people to get to the root cause of their gut and digestive issues. So I work with a lot of people that have constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, abdominal pain, acid reflux, skin issues, hormonal issues, things like that. And I really explain to them what causes this at the root. And then we take a very ancestral holistic approach eating foods like this and, you know, exercising and getting outside and doing some other things like drinking teas or apple cider vinegar water or very natural things to help them heal their body. So I walk you through how to eat to heal your gut, um, what kind of lifestyle things to change, how to manage stress, how to get toxins out of your body, all that good stuff. So if you want to really learn what's happening with your gut and learn how to heal it, um, yeah, I would love to help you with that. If you want to hear more about what I offer with my program and see if it's a good fit for you, I will leave a link below to book a call with me um, and I can share more about that with you. So if you're interested, be sure to do that. I would love to talk with you and thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it.